your exams and your thorough with your subjects. Is it children? The government has announced the date also and you will be excited to write your exam. Is it? As I told you previously, till it is the time for you to do the revision seriously. The seriousness should be there with you. You should study keeping in mind that you are going to face the examination. After you have spent so many days, so many months, I think one or two months you wasted. But now take it a serious time to study for your exam. As I told you previously, social okay. studies, it is a huge subject wherein you can score your percentage. Social studies, where you can get your percentage more. Because social studies, there you are going to explain it as a story. You are going to expand and write. You have to write point wise. Whatever answers you are writing, you have to write it in a point wise. Then, underline. Underline the major point, which is very important. That editing, you just underline it with a color pencil or a black pen, whatever it is. You underline it. You highlight. Okay. Then, you write it neatly. Whatever you are writing, write it neatly and precisely. Okay. Don't scribble. Don't scribble the answers. Don't overwrite the answers. Understood? So now I am going to do the revision. Revision questions. That is the questions which has been appeared again and again. I am going to tell you few questions among that. So whatever I am telling you, you just read that and get thorough. Thorough the answers and try to write the answers by yourself by Keeping the timings. You just set the timings and see what is the minutes you are taken to write one answer. Understood? By that way, you can get a thorough revision. Understood, children? So, some of the questions I will explain to you little by little and then I will be telling you the questions also. Okay, the again the very last questions will be like uh, what is the reason for the battle of class Z? What are the reasons? What are the reasons for the back of class C? We should know what are the reasons means. That is Ali Wadi Khan. That is Nawab of Bengal died. And after his grandson Sirajidawla came to the throne. The battle of class C took place between the young Nawab Sirajidawla and the British in 1757. Okay? Then what are the reasons is that misuse of dust tech. What is dust tech? I explained you. That is a license. License. There is a license that can ensure anyone to import and export without paying any tax and transport goods anywhere. That is dust tech. That is the getting the license. Okay? That can ensure anyone to import or export without paying the tax. And that one was misused by the officials. They misused that. That is the officials of the company causing loss to the government treasury. Secondly, mending of the fort without the permission of Raj Gaula. The British, they repaired the fort of Calcutta and placed cannons. Cannons is nothing but the guns which is used in the warfare, which is almost attached to the two or three wheelers. Okay, three wheels breakers it has been attached. So that cannon they are uh, kept in the fort. And that when Siraj Dawla asked them to remove that. And in spite of that, they neglected to obey them. Okay, then next it is the Black Room Tragedy. Black Room Tragedy means what is that? That is, Siraj Dawla conquered the Fort William easily and implemented, imprisoned some of the British, Britishers. Okay, if you present more than there is 146 Englishmen in a black room where it was congested, where there was no hair, where there was no light. Okay, in such a situation, he put down 146 Englishmen and out of that, 123 died because of suffocation. Okay, this is called as the black hole.
old tragedy. So this enraged Robert Clive, this enraged Robert Clive, and he arrived with Bengal with a huge army. Understood? So that is the reason for the Battle of Plassey. Understood? Yeah. The next question will be list out the reasons that led to the failure of the mutiny. That is 1857, the first war of Indian independence. Okay, that is the reason that led to the failure of the mutiny. Okay, the first war of Indian independence failed due to various reasons. What are the various reasons? Mean? It did not cover the every part of India. Okay, it did not cover every part. It was mainly concentrated on the issues of the rights of kings and queens rather than liberation of the country. They were not aware of the liberation of the country rather than the kings and the queens. As it was not a planned mutiny, they did not have a plan. Without plan, everything has happened. Then there was many unexpected results. Then the unity among the Britishers and the disunity among the Indians. The Britishers had unity. They were all together. But the Indians did not have that unity. They were having disunity. They were against each other. Okay. Now the mutiny lacked direct leadership. They did not have a direct leadership. They did not have a proper leadership. The soldiers also lacked discipline. The soldiers also lacked discipline and organizing skill. Okay. More they were not much trained. Okay. The Indian soldiers, okay, the lacked military strategies, planning capabilities and soldiering skills. Okay. Next, the freedom fighters lack a definite aim. They did not have a definite aim. Okay. So, like this, there are various reasons for the failures of the mutiny. That is, which mutiny? That is, this mutiny. Okay. Now, many of the Indian kings extended their loyalty to the Britishers and did not support the freedom fighters. They were supporting the Britishers and not the Indian freedom fighters. Understood? So now, the plundering other crimes committed by the Sipai made them lose their faith of common people. During the war, the people, during the small, small battles or whatever reward was taking place, the Indian soldiers itself, they looted the people. They looted the houses and that is the reason why they lost their faith in the common people, lost their faith. Okay? So these are all the reasons that led to the failure of the mutiny. Understood? Yes. Okay, next question will be, what were the immediate causes of the first war of Indian independence? Immediate cause. What made them to revolt against the Britishers? Okay, that is the, the, in, the Indian soldiers who were present in large numbers in the British army believe that they can drive away the Britishers if all of them become united. They thought that if they will unite themselves, then they easily can drive out the Britishers. In this situation, the British started providing Royal Enfield guns. Okay? They provided Royal Enfield guns, a type of new and improved guns. Okay? At that time, a rumor was spread out. A rumor was spread out that the bullets of these guns were smeared in the fats of pig and cow. Okay? That was a rumor. That was rumor that the Enfield guns were smeared with the fat of pigs and cows. The cow was sacred for the Hindus. The Hindus worship the God, worship cow as God. And the Muslim pig was prohibited for the Muslims. So these with these two facts, the guns were smeared. Okay, now this became the immediate cause for the mutiny. Okay, so they became religiously, because religiously, the Hindus considered the cow was sacred, whereas the pig was prohibited.
created for Muslim. Understood? The room where caused lot of unrest in the Bharatpur military soldiers when the soldiers were directed to load the bullets to the gun by chewing off a part of bullet. So this one was, became huge. Okay? And that is the reason why they, it was a immediate cause for the mutiny. The next is this, what are the effects of terrorism or what is terrorism? Okay, terrorism can be called as extremism. That is, this method putting pressure on the government, putting pressure on the government. Terrorism based on political idea. Terrorism creates psychological pain and influence the cultural aspects negatively. Understood? So now, these are organized crimes that is perpetrated by organized group of people. Such activities are called anti-national and anti-social acts. Okay? Bringing down of World Trade Centers in USA, bomb attack in Bali in Indonesia, bombing various cities in France. The terrorism is based on extreme religious sentiment, separatism, rationalism or leftist idea. Often a country they use explosive, that is people, they use explosive deadly gases to obtain their goal. The killing done by terrorists are pre-planned, they keep it pre-planned. Before they do training, lot of training, they work with their own network of intelligence. They employ modern day gadgets and means of transportation. Okay, so these are all the effects of terrorism. Understood? Yes. The next question will be, what are the differences between organized and unorganized workers? Okay, so now the economy is divided into primary, secondary and tertiary. Similarly, based on the securities and facilities available. Okay, the sector which is enrolled, the sector is enrolled as per the law, government and provided fixed wages, facilities within the framework or law is called organized sector. It comes under the law. The difference is that this sector is guided by Minimum Wages Act Employees Provident Fund. And now this sector has to take permission of the government before it begins its function. Thirdly, they have to pay tax and they are guided by legal modalities. Then the relationship between employee and employer is guided by legal provision. This is all happening in the organized sector. Whereas unorganized sector, unorganized sector, there no legal provision does not completely govern. Okay? The relationship between employer and is not guided by the legally. It is not guided legally. There no tax provision. The labors don't, they won't get any medical facilities. They don't get any medical facilities. They do not get any paid leaves. They do not get any paid leaves. Laborers like construction workers, loading and unloading workers, brick construction, BD workers, mini workers and many other laborers belong to this sector. The fact that most of the fact that most of the laborers work in unorganized sector. Understood? So this is between our organized and organized sector. It is governed by the rule and regulation of the government. Here there is no such legal provision. Understood? That is the difference between organized and organized sector. I hope you are understood that. Is it children? Okay. Next question. What way the 
reformation activities of Annie Besant. Reformation activities of Annie Besant. Okay, Annie Besant. She was arrived from a Irish lady. She was lady from Irish. She came to India in 1893. She came to India in 1893. The movement of the Theosophical Society was started to grow more. Okay, she arrived in India as a member of the society. She was born in 1847. She was born in 1847 in London. She was born in 1847 in London. Okay, she divorced her husband, who was a priest in an Anglican church, and became an active member of the society in 1889. She advocated. that indian culture is far better or far superior to that of the western culture which is based on materialism okay this movement was reformation movement of hinduism she also did a comparative study of hinduism and buddhism bhagavad gita she translated bhagavad gita to english is one of the major achievement of ani besant she was called as shweta saraswati ani besant was called as shweta saraswati she wanted education for all she opened schools she started central hindu college at banaras in 1898 hindu college at banaras at in 1898 the same institution became a university due to the forethoughts of madam mohan malviya in 1916 okay she started two periodicals that is two newspapers that is new india and common well to initially discuss the current problems and social issues she started own rule league in 1916 home rule league the home rule home league rule in 1916 and initiated home rule movement in madras region the credit of creating the credit of creating religious reformation movement and a new sensibility for hinduism in the early 19th century should go to the theosophical society so that is the achievements of ani besant okay she started the movement and became the first women president of indian national congress understood children yes then what were the conditions under subsidiary alliance explain what were the conditions okay lord wellesley lord wellesley brought this policy into effect in 1798 in order to bring the local kings under the control this was basically a military protection agreement between the east india company and the indian states the condition was that the indian kings had to keep the british army in this kingdom the english that is the, the indian king they have to give protection to the british army in this kingdom and secondly the state concerned had to bear the expenses of the army and the wages of soldiers and also to give certain revenue land as well thirdly the king had had to have a british resident in this court okay next it is the king had to have the put the king could not appoint any other european without the permission of the british the kings the kings could not appoint they could not give permission for any of the europeans without the permission of the british in order to enter into an agreement the pact with any indian state the permission of the governor general was mandatory very compulsory that they have to take the consent of the governor general next in return for all these services the company would offer protection to the state from any internal or external aggression okay this is all about the conditions of the subsidiary alliance okay so now next 
students, the, I will continue the revision in the next class. Every day I will be giving you some of the questions like this. You can go through that. Okay children, whatever questions I have explained you, you just go through, take in your classwork, check the answers and make it mandatory that you will write the answers and check it for yourself. Okay children, okay I think you will start learning. Don't waste your time. Okay, thank you children.